you just recent or oh, attended the conference in London. You just shared uh, some of the highlights of the, the just ended conference. Yes, um, this conference was very important. It um, has taken some decisions and also some pledges were made. Mm -hmm. First, the conference recognized the negative impact of um, legal wildlife trade on local communities. Mm -hmm. And also some member states have um, also um, pledged support uh, to financially and technically uh, to the conservation, especially to those range states. Mm. Um, and also that uh, we have uh, decided to have a concerted effort. That means collectively uh, we need to um, fight um, against uh, wildlife trade, mm -hmm. especially illegal wild trade of um, for our iconic species. Now in terms of the financial contribution, is that directed towards Namibia in general? Or is it just in terms of these specific uh, sort of uh, third or first world countries donating then to um, countries like Namibia? Yeah, it depends on the programs. We, mm -hmm. we of course, we countries, developed countries mm -hmm. um, have pledged, like for instance, the uh, UK, some of the EU countries, and also Japan, they have fa pledged financial support. Um, and that would be then required that uh, individual countries will come up with project proposals mm. to access that. Okay. And also WWF also pledged uh, some technical support to fight um, legal trade. Okay, so then what were some of the plans of action and uh, that were decided then at the conference apart from then the funding and what are some of the other commitments uh, that were made by some of the participating countries? Yeah, the, the, the recognition that the wildlife um, um, illegal wildlife trade has on local uh, communities the very negative impact and also given that this uh, illegal wildlife trade um, has a very negative impact on local economies and um, you know that uh, to come to Namibia uh, Namibia um, relies much more on tourism and uh, our tourism here in the country the most attraction um, is wildlife. Uh, if you cut that, if you do not have the wildlife depleted, that means it will have a very negative impact on our economy. Now, at the particular conference, you mentioned that, or you indicated that the ministry needs about $105 million per month in order to protect the rhino population course a huge amount indeed just for those out there who perhaps don't understand the the full-on or have a full understanding uh, in terms of what it goes to in terms of protecting our rhino population just give us a breakdown at how you arrived at this figure protecting those animals requires first of all personnel who are armed not just rangers uh, and the uh, park wardens you need uh, security and you need those people in the field to protect those animals. Not, and our animals are scattered. They are not only in one place. It's easy to protect animals in zoo or in one park. But now, some of them are not in national parks. Some of them are outside national parks. Some of them are in conservancies. Some of them are in a, in, in a private ownership. And some of them are animals that we have, uh, we have given in custodianship to private farmers. So. Our, our, our protection goes beyond parks. And then you need to have more personnel on the ground, camping there, giving them food, and you have to patrol both ground and uh, aerial patrol every day. Mm. Uh, flying um, every day, making sure that you do surveillance. Mm. Um, equipment that you have to deploy there. Um, I can tell you that uh, some of the farmers are almost giving up, and I want you to consult them, even ask them how much it costs you to protect those animals, because you have to have people that are coming. It's easy to the government, even it's, it's cheaper.